Hello everyone, Joanne with StampingInTheValley.com and welcome to my craft room. I believe this is one of the prettiest cards I've ever made. I love this. I had so much fun. I'm really attached to this gingham set, the gingham gala, very much attached to it. I made just the little envelope with the little rosebud there, so pretty. And then the inside of my card. I love this uh, effect right here. It's almost like that chicken wire that we had. I used that there and just made the inside of the card. And this trellis reminds me also of that chicken wire. I think it would look fantastic in a silver foil. I want to show you if you order this set, when you open this up, it's going to come like this. Just flip it over. The trellis is on the other side. Just wanted to show that to you. So you have some fantastic framelits, a very large framelit to cut that um, rose, these roses out, and then I colored those with the Stampin' Blends. So I wanted to talk to you just for a second about what it says here at the top of these, um, these uh, stamp boxes. Cling Stamp Set. That now means it's red rubber and you use a clear mount. It used to say Clear Mount Stamp Set, right there, Clear Mount Stamp Set and then it was red rubber and you used a clear block <laughs> and how funny see there's no cling on the back of these because it's not cling it wasn't cling now they've made the cling so and then of course we have the po photopolymer stamp set and those you can see through just like that so I just wanted to show you just a little change there uh, coming in this new catalog all I believe all of our clear mount uh, are going to cling now everything will be cling so that's so fantastic because I love putting these on there. I have always wanted to do that, um, but it, they were, it was so difficult. I also wanted to show you something about picking these up, even if it's on your clear block. They are very sticky. I've used my quick pick tool with the spatula end, and I just kind of push it down and get under that foam and pull it up because I don't want you guys to rip that foam taking your fingernails and pulling it so I just thought I would show you that um, little trick just kind of get under it lift it they are extremely sticky I love that because I have precision with them then as these are really easy to pick up because they're smaller all right so just a few little tips on this, and here is our absolutely gorgeous card we're going to make in just a minute. Remember, if you order $25 in product from me, these are the two free card kits for the month of January. Please click on the link below, and it will tell you all about um, how to receive these kits. They all come with envelopes. Um, we are... Uh, launching the occasions catalog that pairs with our celebration catalog also and what that is is when you order fifty dollars in product either from the annual catalog or the celebr or the occasions catalog you get to pick free items from the celebration catalog they are full stamp sets guys there's ribbon there's paper um, and talking about paper I have two paper shares left there's a link below that you could watch the video about my paper share I just have two left so I'm very happy for that uh, they will be mailing out uh, at the beginning of January <clears throat> when I'm allowed to when Stampin' Up! lets me uh, so back in just a moment and we're gonna put this card together First, we're going to talk about the dimension of the cards. This is, these are the pieces that we're going to use. I cut this trellis out, and this is of Pool Party. Isn't that pretty? And our, my little gingham check here, this is two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and this is two by two of just regular Whisper White. My card base is 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. It will open like this. And then the first layer is Grapefruit Grove at five and a quarter by four. And my second layer is the Gingham Gala paper that is five by three and three quarter. And then we're going to build on top of that. We, I also have my Whisper White envelope. I've already stamped my little rose in my pool party on that. I think that's just so pretty. So we're going to move this aside. Um, <clears throat> and now what I want to do... I'm just going to scoop this up and I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus 
because the rose trellis is a very large stamp and I want to do it in Memento, Tuxedo Memento Black Ink because I want to color. Now I like to use my stamping box, the box that the stamps come in, and I like to put that underneath my stamparatus just like that because if you don't, watch, I do this all the time, you're going to get like a little give right there, but when you put this under here, when you ink it, it's solid. So it fits perfectly. So um, I've already mounted this, but what we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do this. It is so clingy. I love it. And I love having that cling on the back. It, makes, it just makes it perfect. It just makes it perfect. This is just a piece of Scrap Whisper White. I line it up on the grid, and you don't need the foam mat on it because we are on red rubber. So you want to go right to the base plate. And I just line this up just to make it straight. It really doesn't matter with this because we're going to cut it out with a framelit. So I just put it on the paper like so and bring my door over and close it. And it'll pick it up right there. Just beautiful. Take my Memento Black and now I'm going to go ink to stamp. And we're going to go ahead and ink up those roses. And bring it over and push and press it just a little bit and up. Now as you can see it's good it's good but it could be better. So because we have the Stamparatus and it's a positioning device we're in the exact same position that we need to be. I'm going to go ahead and ink this up again and I'm going to bring it over and we're just in the same place. Isn't that wonderful? And that's exactly what I want, I believe. Let me take a look at this. If we do it a third time, we're not going to do it one more time. Do it one more time. I just inked up my memento. I hope I put enough ink. Sometimes, though, I get when the stamp's a little light uh, or big like that, I get a little light handed toward the middle of it. I have to remember to tap tap it. So let me go ahead. Oh, yes, that's much better. Yeah, that was my bad. I just wasn't really applying as much pressure to the center of the stamp as I should have. So now let's look at that. So perfect and so crisp. I'm going to be back in a moment. Cut this out and we're going to put the card together. We're going to go ahead and start with our stamping. I have my little 2x2 two two Whisper White here on just a piece of scrap paper. And I have my envelope. On my last card, the little rose I did in um, Pool Party, and on this card, I'm going to do it in Grapefruit Grove. So I just want to take it and tap, tap, and I love, isn't that nice just to see, to me, that is so major. I love seeing that image. So I'm just going to tap it, and I'm going to stamp and turn my envelope and stamp. I always decorate my envelopes. It doesn't take all of two seconds. So let's move that aside. And then I'm going to bring in the base of the card and I'm going to put two roses, one on either corner here, up here. Now remember, I don't, I'm on red rubber so I don't need the foam mat. And as you can see, I've switched to my black um, grid. Now, my other little top was getting a little bit too much ink on it. <laughs> so I switched. Okay, so that's the inside of the card. I kind of like the darker background, actually. Now let's get this completed. I'm going to take this little image and, you know, do it however you want. If you want the four at the top or the one, I want the one. And I'm going to do this in Pool Party for sure. I want this light. And I'm going to stamp it on the top of it. And then come over to the right just a little bit and stamp it there so that it's almost like it stair steps its own self. And now I'm going to take my sentiment, I thought of you today. I always think of you guys every day. I think, what, what else can I do on there that they might like? <laughs> Actually, I really am always thinking about videos that I can do. So I'm going to center this and right there. Good. 
we're going to place this with some snail on our little gingham check there. Let's take that off of there now. That gingham gala, I have really been using the bejesus out of it. And this is really nice because you could just line up on some of the check lines and you're straight. Let me show you this packet. This packet is the Gingham Gala 6x6. Six six. You get Balmy Blue, Daffodil Delight, Grapefruit Grove, Highland Heather, Lemon Lime Twist, and um, it pairs with, of course, Whisper White is the background. So it has the smaller check and the larger check. And as you can see, I've been going insane with it. Now I'm going to attach this to the inside of my card and we'll have that done. And we could just put this down with snail because nothing is embossed. Nothing's popped up. <clears throat> so I'm going to attach that right here in the middle. Just like that. Now on the outside of the card, we can go ahead and attach our Grapefruit Grove piece, which this is at five and a quarter by four. And of course I'm out of snail. We always have another one handy, right? <laughs> but it never fails, I run out on camera. So right there. And we leave our border around the card just a little bit. Everything's cut back a quarter of an inch, so it should give you about an eighth of an inch border. Oh, that got that crooked. I hope I'm not committed. No. Got that a little cattywampus on the bottom there. We got lucky that it didn't totally commit. All right, there we go. Like that better. Just like that. Let me close my inks up here if we're done. Next, what I'm going to do is work with the Stampin' Blends. So there's that. Now, the um, DSP now, right to the edge with the snail. And now there's a little border around this also. There we go. Perfect. All right. Back in a moment, and we'll attach the outside of the card. We're going to finish the card now. I've colored most of the roses with the Stampin' Blends. I love these. We're going to use a little Calypso Coral to do this one. I want to show you how to do a little blending. I also want to show you how I store them. This is a paper pumpkin box. I just printed a Stampin' Blends thing off of the website and um, they store perfectly in here. So I love that. If you are starting your collection of Stampin' Blends, uh, just pick the, I always suggest the combo pack, but it doesn't matter if you order them separately, it's still the same price. But I will suggest this color lifter marker. Now what this does is if you go outside the lines a little bit, it'll push the color back into the um, area that you want it to. It's not really an eraser, but it, it is an alcohol marker and it will actually push the color back in. I use it all the time because I do go outside the lines. So first what I'm going to do is use my light Calypso Coral and I'm going to use the brush tip because it's a large area. The leaves I did in um, Granny Apple Green, just in the light Granny Apple Green the leaves I did, I didn't even um, uh, shade them at all because I thought they just looked pretty like that in the granny apple green. And this is Daffodil Delight, Pool Party, and Calypso Coral, and what is it, Pink Pirouette, whatever the pink is. So that's what we've got going on there. I wanted some pretty color going up that trellis, and I want to color this just when you use these always put the light, I do, I put the light down first. This is the way I like to do it. Because I'm not an artist and I need Stampin' Up! to help me. And they do. Now when you use the tip of this brush, very light, very lightly touch and watch the ink spread. You don't really need that heavy of a touch with it and because it's alcohol it's going to just kind of spread out a little bit so you just want to kind of take your time 
I like turning my project. I'm left-handed, so I have to keep things in, in view. So I turn my project. So I just come around like this with the light. Light of anything. Light of anything. That's how I've done all of this. Now, I go ahead and get the dark. And again, with this, I'm going to use the brush tip. I used the pointed tip on the granny apple green because it was smaller spaces. Now, see where, let me show you this up close. See where Stampin' Up! has put these dark lines in here? See right there? To me, that's like where shading should happen. So, I just lay down a little bit of color all around those dark lines. Honest, guys, I'm not an artist. Not an artist whatsoever. Then I go back in with my light Calypso Coral and I pull that color into the relief. Kind of push it out of the color, okay? Pulling it into the lighter portion. And here is where you're going to get your shading. It's literally the markers and the area that Stampin' Up! has the little dark um, lines in, it's going to shade this project for you. So I just kind of push it out into every single one till I get the color that I want. And you can go back in, you could add more dark, you could push it out again. However, you know, whatever effect that you are looking for, but that is really how I shade. And it's that simple. Now, oh, right here, look here. I got outside, I'm glad that, I'm kind of glad that happened. I hate when it happens, but I'm glad it happened here. I'm outside the lines, right there. Okay, right there. So I'm going to get my lifter. And here I'm going to use the pointed, the harder pointed tip. And I'm going to go ahead and again with the pushing motion, I'm going to push it back into where it should be. A little back and forth, a little push push. There we go. Let me show that to you. Nice. And that will just fade out. And if you don't get it the first time through, you can always go back and add a little bit more and push it a little bit more. But I think that is going to be perfect. All right. So let me get this out of the way. And now we're going to flip this over and we're going to add some dimensionals. I'm going to use large ones and minis. Let's put our minis on first. I like to put the minis out here toward the edge in these little areas. They fit perfectly. If you have been a customer of mine, and you have, now I'm going to switch to the larger ones, and you have not received your occasions and celebration catalog, if you've been a customer for a little over a year, I sent every one, one, and I found a customer last night that had not received hers. So, of course, I called them immediately, and they sent her one out. But I do a special mailing selector through Stampin' Up! so that it gets mailed through like a, I guess, a publishing house or something like that. It's faster and easy, a lot easier for me. And um, so I guess they missed her. I don't know. But if you haven't received them, please email me, joannemaddy at outlook.com, and uh, I will be more than happy to call Stampin' Up! and get one sent to you or get a set sent to you. All right. Here is that element with the thank you. I love this. Look at the little holes. I wanted to show you this framelit. So pretty. There's a lot you can do with this. So I just wanted to show that to you guys. Nice framelit. Let's bring our card base in. And now we have all of our dimensionals on. And the first thing we want to do is attach our trellis. And that we're going to do with some Tombow. I kind of really like the darker background, guys. I think I'm just going to go back to it. I used to do that a while ago. So just a little Tombow. And you just want to put it on the outsides. 
kind of coming down through here. Just a dot at each point there. It'll hold it down nicely. You don't need much Tombow. It's very sticky once it, you know, starts that setup mode. I come down the middle of this just a little bit. Just a few dots. And we're happy with that. Now I want to offset this to the right a little, but in also. And again, you can use the squares to line this up. This way everything just turns out so nice. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just like that. Perfect. Now I'm going to put my thank you down here. And I want it in the middle. Just like that. And then I'm going to take my roses. And this makes this card. I love this card. And I'm just going to attach them up here. We're done, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Look at these two beautiful cards today. <clears throat> inside and here I use the um, the grapefruit grove on the outside rows and here I use the pool party on the outside I think they both look great thank you so much for watching please go to stampinginthevalley.com click on the big blue button order any and all of your Stampin' Up! supplies remember these catalogs launch January 3rd I sure would appreciate your business we're having a big recruiting special $99 you get to pick $175 worth of product that's amazing or for $129 you pick $175 worth of product plus you get the tote um, let me show you that tote right here you get this tote that's for $129 but you still get $175 worth of product you still get to pick from the celebration catalog it is a definite win-win situation if you're thinking about ordering hundred dollars worth of product think about becoming a demonstrator join my team and now I have a special Facebook page for my team members you'll be getting emails guys um, or uh, so, like friend requests and it's um, I'm really happy to have that for my downlines now so I'll be getting on there with them and doing some live videos also uh, throughout the month so thanks again for watching and please have a happy crafting day